All right, the USFL, a lot of things happened over the past 10 or so days. You know, uh, Michigan, they did beat the Pittsburgh Maulers, and they get the first overall pick and the first pick in every round of the 2023 draft. That was announced over, you know, last weekend. That was announced last weekend. Um, that, that game, that final game between these two teams would be for first round picks. Congratulations to the Panthers. You get a reward um, for beating the Maulers and winning the game. And, you know, not ending your season on a bad note. So, you know, it is what it is there. Um, I think Fox and NBC are pretty pleased, you know, with the ratings and stuff like that. I think there is room to grow for the USFL. They completed a regular season. They've completed their playoffs. And we're going to talk about their playoffs in just a second, at least the semifinals. And, you know, um, next weekend we'll be previewing the championship game and everything like that. So, you know, get ready. I, I cannot wait to talk about the USFL championship. But let's talk about the playoffs, the semifinals. P playoffs. Oh, yes. you Yes, playoffs did indeed happen in the USFL. First off. First things first, Philadelphia, New Jersey. Philadelphia beat New Jersey 19 to 14. Lots of turnovers in this game, but the Generals' turnovers, especially the picks by Luis Perez, the offensive line for the Generals, could not, you know, stand the chance against the Stars. They couldn't stand the chance against the Stars, you know. And I mean, they're, it just they're, the, the picks were just too costly. For the Generals, Darius Victor, he only had the only offensive touchdown for the Generals in this game. You know, it just was not, it was not a good time. Not a good time for New Jersey in this game. You know, at least we got a couple of kick returns for touchdowns. Cavante Turpin and Maurice Alexander returned a kick for a touchdown. But Maurice Alexander's kick was the game winning touchdown. And despite all this, Philadelphia's, you know, Philadelphia rigid a little bit. Case Cook is a little bit injured. He he was able to come back, um, but I'm not sure if Matt Colburn and Channing Stripling came back. Both those guys were also injured. So we'll see how that affects them coming into next weekend, 4th of July weekend. You know, everything like that. And then the other USFL City final, New Orleans and Birmingham. New Orleans um, unfortunately for the Breakers, they could not overcome the Stallions. They lose this game. And it's it's just unfortunate. 31-17 there. Birmingham with the W. Now, Jamar Smith and crew, you know, what they did in this game was genius. We're talking long drives that lasted over seven minutes. There were multiple drives that lasted over seven minutes in this game by the Stallions, and that just tired the Breakers out. You know, lots of slants were being used. Like there were like four straight completions from Smith that involved slants, and the jumbo T formation being utilized. You know, you know the T bone, the big, the jumbo T, the the big boy formation. You know. That, that was also key in this game, and, you know, that combined with the long drives were able to tire the breakers out and put them on the burner. And Victor Bolden, he also got a kick return touchdown, so, you know, it, it was just crazy that we had multiple kick return touchdowns in these semifinals. Pretty exciting stuff there. Kyle Sloter, unfortunately, his issues in the second half of the season, and really his issues the entire season, but they mostly even in the second half. His turnovers and he turned the ball over way too much. He did he did he he battled through his injuries, but unfortunately that just didn't get the job done. And the Stallions defense led by DeMarquise Gates, who I believe took one to the house, you know, impressive. And it's the way it's been all season long, save for the loss against Houston. But Birmingham Stallions, they did it again. Another W for Birmingham. So it'll be Philadelphia and Birmingham in the USFL championship and notice that the stars in every iteration of the USFL even though there's only been two have been to every single championship some variation of the stars have been to every single USFL championship from the three seasons of the 80s to now in 2022 and you know everything is coming to
to a close next weekend, 4th of July weekend for the USFL. And, you know, I know awards and stuff like that were handed out, but I don't really care about those. Um, my thoughts on everything, again, both these games today, you know, especially Philadelphia, New Jersey, were the right type of exciting they kept me. They kept me on my seat as I was watching lacrosse as well. We'll talk about lacrosse in you know a couple more weeks here. So we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that. And, you know when we come back to, uh, with our July update coming on Friday, I believe. Um, so you know stick around for that. Um, you know Philadelphia played well. New Jersey played well. New Orleans did play so well. Birmingham played a lot better. Again, it was just. It was just, you know, the right teams made the championship. And if you, and a lot of people were picking Philadelphia to make the championship. Congrats to you. I forgot my picks from a week ago already. I know I said Birmingham would you know, would go, but I'm not sure who I said in the second game. Again, the second. This, this Philadelphia-New Jersey game was completely a toss-up to me. And, you know, whoever I picked, you know, you know, it is what it is. I mean, you could. This could have went either way. Philadelphia, New Jersey could have went either way. I'm not surprised at how Birmingham, New Orleans went at all. Uh, again, the Birmingham defense is just too dominant. You know, Marquise Gates. He, some somebody's going to be looking at him. You know, in, in the NFL, Kevontae Turpin. Somebody's going to be looking at him as well. You know. So, I think. You know, the semifinals were great. Um, I'm not sure about that little um, concert, which I realize now was a plug. I realized the dude that came for the USFL concert, at, uh, the semifinals concert in between the games, I realized that was a plug, really, for, you know, one of Fox's new TV shows in the fall that, uh, honestly, like, who cares about the primetime TV slate in the fall? <laughs> I mean, seriously, who cares? Like what? A, 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 like the dude is starting in uh, Trace Atkins or whatever his name is is starring in a musical. Like who cares? Like a musical type show? Who cares about that? Bruh, get that out of here. You don't care about that. So, what did y'all take away from the final? You know, week of the USFL regular season and the semi finals. You know. It's going to be one hell of a championship game. I cannot wait to talk to you all again about the U.S. Bell Championship and everything like that. So, you know, come back first weekend of July, the Fourth of July weekend. We'll be we'll be all around. We'll be we'll be covering everything. You know, that weekend. So, you know, get yourselves ready and let's have a good one. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Um, about maybe like 4.30, 5 o'clock, you know, tomorrow. That's Central Time, by the way, um, to talk this week in the football. So I'll see you then, and y'all take care and have a good rest of your Saturday night. Peace.